Hello all, welcome back. In the last video, we have already created an Axis Stream IP core, which does the inversion operation. So in this video, we will try to build a complete system which uses this inverter and we will try to integrate it with the Axi DMA controller. So I'm starting a new project and I'm not keeping it inside Akira somewhere outside. Let's call DMA system. So the first step is to configure your IP repository so that we can use that DMA, not DMA, the inverter in this project. Go to IP repository and add the path to your repository, which is this one. Select. Okay, now create a block design. Zinc processing system. Block automation. Okay. Now let's add our IP, which is inverter. And you will notice the connection automation option is not coming because there is no way to directly connect the stream interface with the GP port here because this is memory mapped, this is stream based, there is no address. So that's why that option is not coming. But you can notice like our Axis Stream slave interface is here and Axis Stream master interface is here. So let's add the DMA controller. So I'm searching for DMA and there are many DMAs actually. The one we are going to use is this one, Axi Direct Memory Access. Once you add it, we have the connection automation option. Okay, so let's do it. So when I do connection automation, okay, the option is to connect the Axi light interface of the DMA controller with the GP port of the processor. So basically he is saying like he can connect this interface Axi light with the GP port. And remember this interface is used for configuring the DMA controller from the processor. Okay, so let's do that. And it is done. Uh, you can see from the processor GP, it goes to the interconnect, from it goes to the Axi light. That's it. You cannot see any other option to connect any other interfaces. Uh, it doesn't happen automatically. So maybe some of them you have to do manually. So remember this interface, M Axi memory mapped to stream. This is the interface through which the stream data no, this is uh, Axi. Where is our Axis? M Axis. This one. Memory map to stream. This is the stream interface through which the data read from the memory will come out. So this interface should be connected to the slave stream interface of our inverter. So you can see the signals here. There is data valid ready. In addition to that, there are two more signals called last and keep. These are optional signals. Uh, our IP, it doesn't have these two signals, but it is perfectly fine since they are optional. So you have to manually connect them like this. Same way, your master interface should be connected to S-Axi S2MM interface stream to memory map okay we connected now there are a few more things we need to do see so in the powerpoint 
uh, you might have noticed we had only five interfaces two to the memory two to the ip stream interface and one light but here you can see more interfaces there is something called s axis sts here m axis sg here so if you double click your ip you will see an option here enable scatter gather en engine this is an advanced feature in dma we haven't discussed it what is scatter gather based uh, dma so that is more complicated stuff so we don't want to use it now so you uncheck this option and check ok so those two interfaces goes away and now we are left with five interfaces out of five we have already connected three we have connected both stream interface and the light interface the only one left is these two master interfaces which are axi which are supposed to go to the memory external memory ddr now the connection automation option is there let me check it yeah he's basically saying he can connect your axi clock of your ip okay so that axi clock gets connected now this reset remember we are not using it entirely but still let's connect it so connect that reset to this reset signal ar reset in this is the axi reset signal so connect it there even if we are not using it internally okay now these two now remember again in the powerpoint i mentioned these two are master interfaces so this should be connected to the external memory either through the gp port or the hp port and uh, we prefer hp port and by default the hp port is not listed here for zinc that's why you don't see the connection automation option so you should go ahead double click zinc and go to pspl configuration and here is the hp yeah. under this is your gp this is your hp so we have four hp port and let's enable one of them okay you can enable either one or you can enable two up to you if you are enabling one both the masters will be connected to the same slave hp port or if you enable two you can connect these two to two different hp ports but for the time being one hp is enough okay now once you add that hp port it is this one uh, HP port, this one, S axi HP zero. The connection automation option comes up, so click it. So he's saying the HP port can be connected to axi DMA controller. Okay, so let's do it, and it gets connected. Again, run connection automation. This is for connecting the next master interface. Okay and that's also connected so let's see what just happened so this was the dma controller and these are the two master axi interfaces they are actually connected to an axi interconnect which is similar to the axi interconnect here which is used for connecting to the dma controller to the processor through the gp port it is similar but this one is called axi smart connect what it basically does is it arbitrates between these two interfaces because you have two master interfaces here but you have only one hp port so you need a bus arbitration and you need to decide like who is going to access this interface at a given point of time okay so that's why he instantiated this one so this is more like a arbitrator and then it is connected to the hp port that's it so that's all our system we have the DMA controller here, we have the stream IP here, we have the processor here, we have the one interconnect here for the DMA controller light interface, we have another interconnect here for the two axi for full master interfaces. Now if you go to address editor, you can see interesting things. So previously you can see only one thing listed here. The processing system because that was the only master in your system now you can see two things are listed because you have two masters so processor as well as the dma so under the processor you can see the memory mapping so axi dma zero 
So what this means is XCDMA0 is a slave to the processor and this is his base address, this is his the upper address. Now under XCDMA, if you expand, you will see two interfaces. These are the two uh, AXE master interfaces which are connected to the HP port MM2S and S2MM AXE master and you can see the address range here 000 to this one which is total 512 MB. Now uh, uh, this address range is actually the address range for your external DDR. So the external DDR always starts from address 0 and all the way up to how much memory you have in your system. On Z board, you have 512 MB DDR. So that's why this is given 512 MB here. Okay. So if if the DMA controller reads or write between the address 0000, 000, 000 to 1 FFF, 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 that will go to the HP port and it will eventually go to the DDR, external DDR through this DDR interface and he will be able to read and write. And you will notice like both of them, both the interfaces are mapped to the same range because both the interfaces are going to access the same DDR. Okay, so don't change this value. Now, the interesting question is whether the processor can access the DDR. Yes, the processor can also access the DDR. If the processor reads or writes within this range, that will also go to the DDR, but it is not listed in this address editor. But if you go to our SDK and look at the system.htf file, the file that you are going to export from, Vivado, in that you can see the address range for every peripheral uh, in the system and in that it will be listed for the processor also the address range for the DDR is this one okay so that arbitration between this HP port and the actual processor is done by the internal DDR controller which you have seen in the previous presentation so now say you are block design now one thing that I would like to mention here is again about debugging. So in 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 couple of videos back, I have shown you how to do in-system debugging by uh, synthesizing your code and inserting the debug core, the ILA core, Integrated Logic Analyzer. Okay, so in that case, again, remember you have to keep some signal using the keep attribute, then you will synthesize it, and in the netlist you will choose which signals you want to debug. Now, if you are using block design and if you want to see the signals which are going through these axing interfaces, it is actually much easier. If you want to see any of the internal signal inside any of these IP, you have to follow the same step that we did before. In your IP source code, you have to do the keep attribute, then you have to synthesize, then you have to insert the debug. But if you want, just want to see the interfaces, how data is going through the interfaces, it is much easier. What you have to do is you click the interface which you want to see in real time and right click and there's an option debug here. So you click it and you can see two small bugs come here. So in real time, when you run it on, on the chip, you can see how data is going through this interface. So I would like to see what is going through my master stream interface what is going through my slave interface and also maybe I would like to see how data is going through this AXE master interface okay and how data is going through this master interface what are master interfaces and how data is going to the HP interface so remember this interface is uh, a multiplex to one between these two. So basically your DMA controller can either read from the memory or write from the memory at a given point in time, which is controlled by the smart interconnect. So once you add this debug option, you will again see this connection automation. You have to run it. So what happens is he will add the integrated logic analyzer, ILA, 
as a block IP here and he will connect all these signals to that IP core for debugging. Okay, so you have to check all of them so that all of them are connected for debugging. Okay, so this is the Ilaco system ILA and you can see all those axis signals are connected to this IP core. So during runtime, we will be able to access this IP core through the JTAG interface and you will be able to see all these signals in real time. So that's it. You now save your core uh, block design, you synthesize it and you can export to SDK and start writing the software. Or you can go all the way until bitstream generation, then you can start the SDK, whatever you prefer. Uh, you don't have to do any pin assignment here because as you notice, the only pins going out of your system uh, are DDR and this fixed IO and these are automatically constrained when you do uh, run block automation. So you don't have to do any pin assignment, you can directly go till bitstream generation. Okay, so software, I'll make it as a separate video and see you soon.